The dramatic events as witnessed all over the planet in prehistory would send civilization back to the primitive state for 6,000 years. That is, if you consider this event having taken place right around the time of the last Ice Age. And perhaps the Aurora was responsible for ending the Ice Age cycle, shifting Earth's settled pattern of behavior. Why does the Easter Island Rangu Rangu inscriptions show characteristics of the petroglyphs found all over the planet? Are the Nazca Lines a massive manifestation of the Aurora? Immortalized in the geoglyphs and the Nazca Spider is definitely showing a design of what the ancient Earthlings were seeing. It seems they tried to make sense of what they were seeing in the sky by comparing the phenomena to shapes of animals that were of the Earth. These shapes of characteristics are matching up with astounding accuracy all over the place. And it seems these civilizations who created them were stuck at these locations for sheltering as the immense discharge of plasmatic activity unfolded before their very eyes. Conservatively, between 15,000 to 11,000 years ago, the planet Earth experienced a series of climatic fluctuations. It is widely thought through study of the geological layer that extreme cold made in very harsh in some regions of our world that is habitable today with continental glaciers extending much further than they do today. But the climate started to warm and temperatures suddenly reverted back and this triggered a cold spell known as the Younger Dryads period. Based on Greenland ice core data, the Younger Dryads began and ended very abruptly, with the start dates to 10,900 BC and its ending, the final warming, beginning around 9,700 BC and may have occurred within an incredibly short period of time almost overnight and this confounds researchers because it is unclear how our planet was habitable during the previous couple of million years settled period but we do know there were golden elements during this so-called ice age the civilizations who flourished in the apparent ice even tell us as much they don't tell us that it was frozen they tell us it was golden the golden age the Hindus and the Egyptians tell us this was before the current wave of existence, that is before 5,000 years ago, and that puts it past the Younger Dryads, also because of the Dark Age that followed the Younger Dryads before the re-emergence around 5,000 years ago. But how do we explain this pattern of abrupt climatic shifts? Perhaps a comet was responsible, as Robert Schock and many other leading researchers have pointed out. A comet hitting the land or a shallow ocean, or exploding above the land's surface, scattering dust and debris into the atmosphere could cause global cooling. But what about the warming events of 10,000 BC? In years past, Robert Schock had speculated that comets hitting deep oceans were responsible. A comet might break the thin oceanic crust, releasing heat from the hot magma beneath. This would trigger vaporized and displaced water to rain down on Earth, releasing tsunamis that would wash across coastal areas, warming the Earth. But even with a comet or a series of comets bombarding the oceans, could the warm happen as quickly as the Greenland ice cores indicate? The mind-blowing similarities found in the petroglyph and pictographic records that relate to geoglyphs and even the undeciphered Rangu Rangu inscriptions of Easter Island may prove to be the biggest uplifting of answers ever formed in the minds of Earthlings separated by thousands of years from the minds of other Earthlings reaching across time and reality and delivering a message that could hold answers to our very existence on the planet we call home. But first, before the realization, let's do the homework. Let's sort the facts from the fiction and establish something missing from the existence of every Earthling alive today. The truth about our existence. We have to consider the concept of the fourth state of matter, plasma. Plasma consists of electrically charged particles and these phenomena are no strangers to stargazers anywhere and everywhere. With familiar plasma phenomena including lightning and the aurora borealis and australis as also the sprite phenomena. 
In the past, much more powerful plasma events sometimes took place due to solar outbursts and coronal mass ejections from the sun. But the sun has not always been alone in the sky display. If the petroglyph records matching up all over the world are to be believed, then solar emissions from other celestial objects are not a possibility but a historical fact. Powerful plasma phenomena could cause strong electrical discharges to hit Earth from electrical plasmatic exchanges between planets in the solar system, burning and incinerating materials on our planet's surface as Dr. Anthony L. Peratt has asserted and established that petroglyphs found worldwide record an intense plasma event in prehistoric Earth. Anthony has determined that powerful plasma phenomena observed in the sky would take on characteristic shapes resembling humanoid figures, humans with bird heads, sets of rings or donut shapes, and snake shapes reflected in countless ancient petroglyphs and seemingly assimilating into the worship of gods leading to the birth of religion in Egypt, Mesopotamia, and above all other influence also on Easter Island the most remote location on the planet. The Easter Island Rangu Rangu inscriptions remain a great deluder of observable hope. Recorded on antique wood tablets stands a great testament of the Aurora event. Characterized on these symbols are the same shapes as found on all other worldwide petroglyphs. The unmistakable similarities are a shocking tribute that is only being realized in the 21st century. Robert Schock has concluded, based on Anthony Peratt's groundbreaking observations, that the Easter Island Rangu Rangu tablets record a major plasma event in the sky of prehistoric Earth thousands and thousands of years ago. This was the event that brought a final close to the last ice age. Plasma hitting the surface of Earth could heat and fuse rock, incinerate flammable material, melt ice caps, vaporize shallow bodies of water creating an extended deluge of rain and send the climate into a warming spell. The release of pressure that follows the melting of thousands of meter thick ice sheets can induce earthquakes and even cause hot rock under pressure to melt and erupt to the surface as volcanoes. The world was in chaos and this is the event recorded by petroglyphs and the Rangu Rangu texts. How the Easter Island residents constructed the Great Moai is unclear, but the fact that Akivi Moai axis of the platform was oriented from north to south, getting the face of the Moai looks exactly at the point where the sun sets during the equinox of the Astral Spring, September 21st, and their backs face the sun of the dawn during the Autumn Equinox, March 21st. Among the oddities of Easter Island are the low-lying, solid, thick-walled stone buildings with narrow entrances that look like bunkers or fallout shelters, and the strange stone houses of Easter Island are similar to the structures formed by the walls and pillars of Gobekli Tepe. Could they, in both cases, have been protection from some type of phenomena emanating from the skies? Maybe this is the same for Durinkiyu. Maybe the ancients built bunkers to shelter from the plasma strikes, and what world did they leave behind, you have to wonder. According to standard chronologies, Easter Island was not inhabited until a mere millennium and a half ago. But do we really know when Easter Island was first colonized? And even if surviving Easter Island antiquities and structures are from a relatively late period, they may reflect much more earlier traditions and styles perhaps brought by settlers from elsewhere that date back to a time of intense plasmatic aurora discharging, and the Rangu Rangu tablets may carefully preserve ancient texts that were copied over and over, reflecting patterns in the prehistoric sky of our planet. The Easter Island Rangu Rangu script, it could be argued, records plasma events in the ancient sky. So too might certain carved motifs found at Gobekli Tepe. The connection between Birdman petroglyphs and plasma phenomena around the world. On Easter Island, we find Birdman petroglyphs 
as well as bird men and bird symbols among the Rangu Rangu hieroglyphs, and even a great tradition of the bird man remembrance and a Go Beckley Tepe, a very similar bird form was carved into the pillars. Dr. Peratt records many plasma phenomena that can be interpreted as having the appearance of snakes and numerous snakes are found on the pillars of Gobekli Tepe, slithering vertically up and down the ends of some of the columns. Could these represent huge thunderbolts of plasma? Plasma hitting the surface of Earth could heat and fuse rock, incinerate flammable material, melt ice caps, vaporize shallow bodies of water, creating an extended deluge of rain and send the climate into a warming spell. The release of pressure that follows the melting of thousands of meter thick ice sheets can induce earthquakes and even cause hot rock under pressure to melt and erupt to the surface as volcanoes. The world was in chaos and this is the event recorded by petroglyphs, geoglyphs and the Rangu Rangu text. The plasma event eradicated advanced civilizations and high cultures of the time, fusing large swathes of built up areas to vertified states and the radiation emanating from the plasma may have affected mental and physical abilities. This could be the basis for the nearly universal myth of a golden age, a time when beings on earth had mental abilities far surpassing those of later times. Plasma and electrical discharges hitting the surface of Earth may have been responsible for the vitrification of ancient stone structures seen in some parts of the world, such as various hill forts in Scotland. People cowered for their lives at the prospect of being turned to vitrified glass by supercell discharges radiating like intense thunderbolts onto our planet. The ancient civilization migrated away from an event they could not escape and as it intensified, they sought shelter in caves, under cliffs, and dwellings built of thick stone or carved into mountainsides. Perhaps Gobekli Tepe was intentionally buried in an attempt to protect it from an ongoing plasma events in an effort by the priest of old to send this information through the ages. Perhaps these places were meant to be recovered in the aftermath of an event that lasted longer than they had anticipated. So long, in fact, that they became forgotten about. The documentation of these events are the petroglyphs and other inscriptions now being recovered into a better understanding of the past. One that makes more sense today than the concept of time itself, only being in a primitive age and bewildering our state of being. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.